Hey guys, it's Wanda from Crazy Days, and today we're in the Deep South Kitchen, and I thought I would show you a little bit about what I've got going on. I get asked all the time, why do you cook so much at one time? And the deal is, today is my cooking day. I don't like to cook all week long, and I do have to cook every day something, but if I've got some things already prepped up, it helps. So today, I've been working on blueberry muffins. I'm working on some fruit that we've got, and I'm going to show you this stuff in a few minutes. Um, Danny's carrot salad, a roast, and I have some hamburger meat laid out. So today I will just be kind of cooking a whole variety of stuff, and tomorrow, when Danny wants something to snack on, he has a muffin, he has carrot salad, and he's going to have um, some uh, sweet potato stuff. I'm going to be making that in a little while. Y'all... When we want to eat lunch, I can run in here. I've got a roast, or either I've got hamburgers already cooked up. Uh, I'll throw them on the grill and cook a whole pound at one time. That gives us a couple of meals. Um, that frees us up to go fishing. If I want to go fishing, we can run out there and go fishing. He fillets them up. I put them in there. And when we want fresh fish, I just take it out like I did last night, and we eat fresh fish. It was awesome. Oh, my goodness. The catfish has no dirty taste. When raised in a spring-fed farm, a uh, spring-fed pond, I might say, the fish doesn't have that dirty taste. It is amazing. We had seconds just because, and we had fish a couple of days ago. So, why do I cook so much ahead of time? I spend, like today, I'll spend all morning probably in this kitchen, and I'm also doing some jam while I'm doing everything else. So that gets some of my canning out of the way. But I do it because the rest of the week I need off. I need to be able to go help Danny with things and I need to edit and I need to do my Etsy and I've got so many other projects that need doing. I can't cook all day, every day. So some things it pays to do ahead. Let me show you what we got going on. Here in the Deep South Kitchen this morning, I made Danny some almond flour blueberry muffins. And uh, you can see. They're ready to be turned over. They just came out of the oven, still a little warm. But he will appreciate this snack. And these have honey in them. Guys, you can cook with honey. That's what we're fixing to talk about is honey instead of sugar. I put him a little bit of Permapasture Farms honey in these blueberries. We're going to be adding a little bit of French vanilla here in my little coffee cup. This is Ticino. It has no caffeine. I've already added the water. You lock this down all the way. Flip it on. And I have one cup of coffee in just a few minutes. But I love this little machine from eBasics. Y'all, I paid for this machine. I'm going to put one at the cabin soon i just wanted to test it it makes life a little easier for one cup at a time it's no time to make and i can use my ticino i can use coffee i don't have to buy those expensive pods so this is a test for me with this i've been using it for about two to three weeks just to see how i liked it before i bought a second one and put it at the cabin now permapasture farms is visited here and they're coming back in the fall they have their own honey. I've been using their honey in a lot of Danny's things. Um, he's liking having honey in it, and I have a supply of honey, but we had been using just a small amount of sugar and everything, and he said just go to honey, and let's see how the recipes do. Here I have blueberries. Now, many people have asked when I did the huckleberry, since I put some limited sugar in the huckleberry jam, Huckleberries are simply little blueberries. These are blueberries. These are deep south blueberries that we harvested from our um, place here. And I have some in here. I'm not giving you a recipe today. I'm just going to give you some tips. But I've got some of them here. I added some lemon juice and a touch of water. We're going to be cooking these down after a while. Okay, guys. So on blueberries let's just talk about blueberries for a minute okay if it calls for four cups of sugar cut it down to two cups of honey 
Um, I'm going to be limiting my honey in my blueberry jam. I'm going to put some in there and um, we don't want a whole lot. So I'm not giving recipes. I'm just saying if it calls for sugar, cut it in half for the most part because honey's way sweeter than sugar in a lot of ways. And you want to taste what you've got. The other thing with making jams with honeys is you want to kind of cook it a little bit longer. Stir it, pay attention to it, but cook it a little bit longer than process. Always check your books and see on processing jams, jellies, things like that. But I'm just trying to give you some hints because people keep asking, can I do with stevia and you, uh, all these other, I, I don't know, I call them aspartame, but it ain't, I mean, whatever. Uh, they say don't use those type things because they do not hold up in a canning process. Honey is a natural, long-term, I guess you would say, sweetener. Just sit it on a shelf and leave it for a long time. And it's still, you can use it, you can reheat it. And if it gets a little hard, you can reheat it and it turns back to honey. Not a pro problem with it. Um, so I would use honey if you're going to use anything in your berries besides sugar try honey i'm not going to be giving you a recipe today because um i'm kind of in a hurry and i'm just adding what i need to mine i didn't measure my berries so i don't know exactly how many berries i have and i'm going to have to go by taste on mine today and um i always put enough honey in there to really kind of cook it down and give it some sweet, but Danny doesn't like oversweet. So keep that in mind, but look for a recipe, guys. That's all I can tell you is look for a recipe. We have been harvesting some of our, I guess what we call Danny grandpa figs, and we're having to fight birds. So what we've done, when they start cracking, we start picking them because if we don't, we go back out, the birds get them. So you see they're they're doing some cracking and you see how big they are these are some really good size figs and what I'm doing today is I'm going ahead and peeling them and putting them in here and we're gonna just hang on to them so we can eat them because this is the way we like them I just cut them in force and we just eat a chunk like that this is a, a fourth of one These things are so good just to eat like this. This is what we like for a snack. There's no sugar, no honey, no nothing. It is just a fig. The nutritional value of a fig is amazing. Y'all need to look it up. For all of you scared to eat figs, you need to check out the nutritional value of a fig. It's like a superfood. Mm. We had one pair here that came off of our big um, moon glow thing. So we're going to eat this pear. I'm going to slice it in a few minutes. That will be part of a break. And we're starting to get scuppernongs. Now our scuppernongs shouldn't have a pink tint, but our muscadines are close, so they're taking a pink tint to them. But you want them kind of a white look. And ours are taking on the pink tint. And we're having to beat the birds with these. This is what you really want is this kind of whiter look but with them being closer together this year they're taking on more of a pinkish white look but delicious oh my goodness these things are amazing i love to just eat them like they are we do have a thing that we take and process them but we're beating squirrels birds whatever we're trying to get some of them off the tree and you can put these in the freezer and save them till you have enough and then juice all of them I've got carrots here shredded. Now, when we harvested our carrots, I shredded a whole bunch of them and put them in bags so I could make Dan Danny's um, carrot salad. And this has worked out amazing to have shredded carrots in the freezer. All I do is take them out, thaw them out, drain them a little bit if they've got excess water, and I go ahead and make his carrot salad as usual. Guys, this was well worth the experiment to see if shredded carrots in the freezer would work. We've, um, it's been about a month and a half and I'm still able to make carrot salad out of the five or six bags that I put in the freezer. 
This is amazing, guys. Also, I put a roast in here. Isn't that great? This is from uh, the cow that we had processed. We bought a whole cow a few months ago, and we're still having steaks and roast and ground beef. See, I'm even uh, thawing out some ground beef for burgers in a day or so. But the roast will go for a couple of days, the ground beef a couple of days. Y'all, it's amazing. I love them in a crock pot so I don't have to deal with it all day. So I hope you enjoyed a little bit about the fruits here at Deep South and how I preserve some of them, what I'm doing, uh, how we eat them fresh. Guys, we'll talk to you later. Thank you from Crazy Days. The Star of David Okra is starting to come in, and you look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? It makes some nice frying okra like my mama used to make, and Danny and I are going to do a video on that shortly. But look at this. Look at the size of the okra. Now this is what you want when you're frying okra. The Star of David is perfect for that. So I take both ends off the little piece too some people don't but I do I cut them in pieces about like this then I just freeze them I don't wash them I don't do anything so I can take out what I want and use them to make okra I just take and uh, I take some out put them in a bowl run warm water over them rinse them and go ahead and drain them then I coat them in my cornmeal and shake them around really good and let them just sit for a little bit before I fry them. Now when I have extra, like I fried some and I had this extra because my pan was full, I just put them in a bag. That way these are already coated, they're ready to go, and you see we're ready to have okra. So Star of David okra, isn't that awesome? We're going to have okra soon. Danny and I are going to show you. How my mama used to cook okra. Okay, so a real sneak peek of what my dining room's looking like right now. I've got my popcorn on the table and I've got to shell it out. Got a couple of pears and odd and end jars and lids if I need them so I don't have to run out. Danny's corn video soon, hopefully. Still got some potatoes, some spaghetti squash and garlic. Jerky tan pumpkins is starting to come in. I'm harvesting out of the greenhouse. As far as you can see, food and food. I've done made so many trips to the cellar putting this stuff up, and I still got a lot of trips to go, and we're still canning. We've got a few um, beans, odd and ends, jerky tan pumpkins. Trail of tears. Round two. Look at this, guys. Round two. And they're hanging on the vines in there. The vines don't look as pretty as they did to start with, but they're still making trail of tear beans. And I've still got a bunch. We're going to see how many I have next time. And as always, my jars here. I went down, filled everything up, and you can see already, it's a little over a week ago. We've got spaces everywhere. We're eating fresh a lot, but I've still got spaces. Isn't that amazing? I love this shelf.